Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Public Sector Catering and Public Sector Catering 100 Group Future of the Service webinar. Today, we are joined by the NACC, and in particular, by Sue Corfrey, Chair of the NACC, who will be giving us an interview and, and answering any questions from the audience and a, a good update on how the care sector is coping as we start to come out of the pandemic. We'll give it a few seconds for people to, to join before we, we go live to David and, and Sue. The, we will follow um, Sue's presentation with um, a, a brief update from Mary Wedge on the NACC Training and Development Forum, which is happening in early October. So we'll just give it another few seconds and then we'll go live and I'm sure people will drift in over the next sort of five minutes or so. If you are joining us today, please use the Q&A for any questions rather than the chat function. That way David is able to, to see them a lot easier. So I'll now go live to David who will introduce today's webinar. Thank you. Yeah. Good morning, I'm uh, David Fode, editor of Public Sector Catering Magazine, and uh, thank you for joining us for the latest in our Future of Your Service webinars. Um, today we're going to be turning our attention to the care sector and the challenges it faces helping to feed the elderly and the most vulnerable people in our society. The care sector has endured a torrid time through the, app, through the pandemic. Um, not only are the residents the most at risk group, but the tremendous benefits to their emotional health and welfare of contact with family and friends have been severely curtailed by the lockdown restrictions needed to keep them safe. We're fortunate today to be joined by someone who knows the pressures that caterers have been working under in that time and can help provide some insight into how the sector manages the return to a sort of normality as we move out of lockdown. Um, Sue Corthray, is in her second spell as chair of the National Association of Care Catering and is chief executive of Harrogate Neighbours, the not-for-profit organisation that aims to improve the lives of hundreds of elderly people in the Harrogate area by providing a fresh daily meal. And uh, so I'd like to welcome Sue. Good morning, Sue, are you there? Good morning, David, and good morning to everybody. Lovely. Um, in a moment, I'll be talking to Sue about the issues facing uh, care catering, after which we'll take any questions that you may have. And then we're going to finish up today with an update on plans for this year's NACC Training and Development Forum in October. And we're joined for that by Mary Wedge, who, with Roger Kello, forms a team that has for many years pulled together the agenda for this important event in the care catering calendar. And we'll, we'll meet her now, I hope, briefly. Good morning, Mary. Are you there? Hey everybody, morning David. Okay, right. Um, before all that, a quick reminder about how the webinar will work. Other than Sue, Mary and me, everyone will be muted. If you want to get in touch during the webinar, um, you can put a question to the panellists, or sorry, the panellists, to, to, <laughs> to Sue um, using the Q&A function. Um, please include your name and company. Um, and you don't have to wait until we start taking questions. You can post one at any time when I'm talking to her. Um, if you just want to comment, just to say you're here, say hi, um, add anything like that, you can get involved using the chat function, um, remembering to choose the option to all panellists and attendees. Um, we won't, unfortunately, be able to answer any questions you post in chat. Right, Sue, um, we might be looking forward to um, more easing of pandemic measures but we can't really ignore what's happened over the last 15 months. So can you tell us about some of the major impacts that lockdown restrictions have had on care home catering over that time? I think one of the, uh, the, the main issues for us within the sector has been continuing to make mealtimes enjoyable for everybody. Obviously, care homes have been locked down. We've had no visitors. We've not been able to go anywhere. So we, there's been much bigger pressure on our chefs and our catering teams to make the mealtimes enjoyable. It, it is the highlight of the day and has continued to be the highlight of the day. 
in some organizations where and um, particularly i can use harrogate neighbors as, as an example um we had to close our restaurant because i have an extra care housing scheme so we've had to deliver our meals to people's apartments so we've had to make sure that 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 enjoyment of those meal times um obviously has continued um and obviously you know staffing issues we've we've had people um unwell with covid um families so we've all had to work together as teams so i think it hasn't just been about the care the catering team working but we've all had to work together um and you know, we've had to really be quite in a, innovative in how we deliver the meals um particularly if you've got groups of homes where we've had to be separate okay um and, and to what extent are the the pressures that you've been working under starting to ease now <laughs> I wish I could say that they were starting to ease, David, but um, I'm sure a lot of my colleagues within the sector know that the, 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 there isn't much easement on, on it. We, we've still, um, particularly in, in North Yorkshire, we've got huge issues with the virus at the moment. Um, it, it's, um, it's worrying. Um, we have issues with staff now um, having to isolate um, because of children. So um, I've got huge pressures on my catering department this week because we've got we've got staff that are having to be at home. Um, so yes, it might be easier in, in relation to the fact our restaurant dining rooms are open and um, we're able to get our as, um, residents down to eat, but our challenges still are the virus is still out there and we've obviously still got the, the challenges with staff um, having to be off. Okay, I mean, to what extent um, can an organisation like the NACC um, help uh, its members during times like this? What, what are you able to do? From an information perspective, obviously the organisation, the NACC, is, is very much able to um, support people from afar. Obviously, we've not been able to get together for such a long time. So our, our webinars have been there um, to, to answer questions, give ideas, um, inspiration. We've obviously had our newsletters going out to everybody. Um, and I think now as we as we navigate our way out of the post pandemic world and, and you know, if we ever get to that uh, return to normal scenario, um, it's a great place for, for, for support for people that um, need it, um, who in some cases are working in isolation or working on their own small teams. So it's, it's a very much a go to place for that support. And obviously, a lot of our members work in the sector as well. So we're there to, to help people and, and, and give that those ideas and support. Okay, um, that sort of sets the scene, if you like, um, uh, about the, the, the context in which we're, we're we, we now operate, um, but looking forward now, what, what are the sort of major um, challenges facing the issue, uh, fa sorry, fa facing the sector? Recruitment, recruitment is a huge issue. I mean, we all know that the hospitality sector has been hit really hard. We've lost a lot of people. A lot of people um, went home when they were furloughed to, um, to other countries. So the hospitality sector is really being challenged and that, that has had a knock-on effect within our sector as well. Recruitment, I, I've never worked, um, and I've worked in the industry for a lot of years where we've got so many vacancies and we're advertising all the time and it's trying to get people to come through the doors. Um, so, and I think um, also um, delivery issues are going to be a, a problem going forward. Um, I haven't seen too much of it from first-hand experience, but I know that there is a shortage of lorry drivers. So obviously from our perspective, we buy a lot local, um, which is good, but if we're going to be affected by supply um, over the coming months, I think that's going to be a, a concern for us within the sector. Okay, and then just taking those um, various issues that you've outlined for us there, I mean, do you see um, any solutions that either you as an organisation or, or your members can individually sort of mitigate by, by action they can take? Um, and are there some where you essentially need help from outside, perhaps with the, that, that sort of, you know, government help in some form, whether that, that's funding or, or such like what, what what are the sort of the the answers if you like to to, to the, the the problems that you've just outlined one of the things i think we we can do is we can really be um we can really promote um what um 
fun and opportunities there are working within our sector. I think we've always been very much um, uh, a sector that um, has not been very glamorous. You know, working in a in a hotel or in a in a restaurant, you know, serving you know fabulous meals is great. Working in the care sector, and I think we we should really be using this opportunity to encourage people that maybe have been furloughed have suddenly realized actually not working those awful hours um unsociable hours you can benefit by by working in care homes and the care sector because we you know can operate from from eight till seven or eight till six or whatever so so i think maybe we can start to try and encourage people to come into our sector the fact that we've got lots of opportunities for people to develop we have training opportunities. The NACC is very good at, at supporting the training and we're very good at um, being able to signpost people to the right training. So I think we need to maybe up our game as to how we um, actively promote what are the benefits of working within the care catering sector? And obviously we can do that through our, through our care chef that we, that we hold every year, through our webinars and, and, and any other way that we can do it through our newsletters to really promote what, what the importance and the, how you make a difference. And also, you know, care catering isn't just about meat and two veg, you know, far from it these days, you know, people's expectations of meals is far different to it to it was years ago. So, you know, chefs are really good chefs delivering and producing fabulous meals. OK, um, and, and just to sort of the, expand that point ever, ever so slightly, you've obviously addressed very much there what um, you as an organisation can do. What individual members can do um is there is there a role for sort of government in in this in in, in perhaps um supporting in in some way efforts to recruit into the sector most definitely david i mean the, the government really need to um help us recruit support you know we keep going on don't we about how you know we wanted a, the, the the reform to go through we wanted the government to recognize and i know surely over the last 15 months um we can see the importance of our sector and how we've we've carried on regardless we've struggled through an incredible time we've not in any way um, um We've ensured that everybody's been looked after, cared for, has eaten well. The pandemic has very much highlighted the importance of good nutrition, where people have had the virus, the recovery. So, yes, we need the government support. Um, and uh, as an organisation, we will continue to champion away at getting that government support. Um, and maybe now we've got the, the new minister, maybe that will help us. All right, OK. Um, now, I believe there's still time to enter the... NAC, NACC annual awards. Um, I'd be just interested to find out what, what you would say to anyone who's still to decide whether or not to get involved in this. This is an opportunity for, for people to really recognise those that have worked in the sector during this last 15, 16 months. And it doesn't have to be an individual, it can be a team that have worked hard and to show them how proud you are, how everybody should be really proud of what we've achieved these last 15 months. You, you cannot say that we faltered once during this, this journey. So the awards is a fabulous opportunity to recognize all the good work that's done. And, and you know, we've got this award this year, um, Triumph Over Adversity, and we introduced it last year. And we obviously thought in 2021 that we still wouldn't be where we are. And it's going to go on for some time yet. We're still working in adverse conditions. So let's really celebrate all the marvellous work and get care homes and care organisations to put people through and, 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 and get their, their applications in, most definitely. OK. Um, and the awards themselves are a part of your annual training and development forum, which, of course, will actually be a live event this year. Um, what, what does that mean to, to be able to sort of um, actually meet um, you know, fellow members and, and, and to uh, have a, a, a live event rather than something that's online? I think care catering um, and care and catering is very much a, a, um, a people uh, industry. You know, we, we 
we deliver our services to people on a daily basis. One of the things I know that I've missed, and as much as I like talking to you, David, via via this, you know, um, it's it, I like to be in a room with people. I like to be able to talk to people. And I think in our sector, we have really missed that one to one, that interaction. So I'm hoping that you know, when we all get together in October, this is going to give us a great chance to see people for the first time in a very long time live. Um, it, it, it'll be great to be together again. It's something we, which we really, really missed. Uh, and I think everybody's really looking forward to it. Um, I, I personally, I can't wait to see everybody. It's going to be great. And I think this year, um, because I think it's the first main uh, event in our sector this year, um, we're going to have a, a good turnout and we welcome everybody to come along. Excellent. OK, um, just looking slightly uh, ahead of that. Sorry, uh, beyond that, should I say. Okay. Um, we've got Meals on Wheels Week um, 2021 running from November the 1st to the 5th. Um, what can you tell us about that? So Meals on Wheels Week, as you know, um, is, is absolutely key in our, in our um, service delivery within the sector. And again, because we've delivered meals to people in their own homes who've been isolated, um, it's been absolutely a critical service that has been... Um, key in keeping people safe and well, not from just the nutrition and hydration perspective, but also, um, as I say, to, to keep people, um, to have that daily contact. So we decided that um, we're going to follow on from last year's theme and do the Meals on Wheels Heroes again, because we've, you know, like I said to you, who would have thought that here we are in July 2021, still in the middle of a world pandemic, still with all the challenges that we've got, still delivering our services differently. And we rely on our people um, within the sector to get those meals out. So we felt that we needed to continue with the Meals on Wheels, the heroes. We're still challenged with the cuts. We've still got all the, um, the issues with the funding not being there for the meal service. So we've had to rely on people being in, in, innovative in developing the meal service, whether it be through colleges, through charities, through pubs, you know, making sure that people in their communities are, are being looked after. So... We, we felt that this year we're going to do the Meals on Wheels Heroes again and, and really congratulate everybody and thank everybody for doing a fabulous job. OK, I'm, I'm, I'm interested on that sort of the, the, this particular point, because the, the, the pandemic itself has, has highlighted just how important this service is. And I wondered if you had any inkling at all about the, this um, the recognition of the role it can play uh, being reflected in, in sort of the political circles. We've, we've got to keep on championing it, David. We've got to keep knocking on doors. Um, I think this year, because we're where we are, we potentially could look at doing some research um, because we'll be able to have some really good facts and figures of what has been achieved um, in our sector, particularly with the, with the Meals on Wheels. So I think this is a really good opportunity for us to um, use what we've done the last 16 months, how things have grown. And I think a lot of the, the new services that was uh, that were set up are here to stay. I don't think people are gonna just suddenly say on the 19th of July, well, I'm not doing that anymore. No. Particularly as we approach the winter, I think we're gonna have a very challenging winter. So we need to look at what we've achieved, how we've achieved it, and what can you do to, to use that data and that information to take that forward with the government and those people that we can try and influence. Okay, that sounds an in interesting uh, little project to, to look forward to. Um, just mo moving on now, um, <clears throat> there's been a suggestion of uh, compulsory vaccination for care home staff. And I just wondered if this was an issue at all for, for your members? The, it, it, it potentially is, it, it is controversial, the, the, the idea of, of making it compulsory, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, obviously it is going to be compulsory. I don't think it's a, 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 it's an, a suggestion. I think that it, it is going to happen. It's a really difficult one, David, and I think we all have our personal um, uh, feelings on it and we also have our you know, work feelings on it. The biggest challenge that we've got in our sector is recruitment. And, and I would hate to think that we are going to be... Um, stopping people from coming to work in, in the sector who might want to work because they haven't had the vaccination. However, on the other hand, you know, the argument can be, well, if you're going to work in the sector, then, you know, why would you not protect yourself, your family and the people that you're working for? Mm. So it's it's a real difficult one. And again, all the NACC can do is to continue to promote and support people, encourage people to come and work in the sector. Um, but we cannot obviously be responsible for what the government are going to implement. 
we just got to support people. Right. Okay. Yeah. And um, the, the, the last point I wanted to pick up on before we start um, taking some of the um, questions that have started to come in now from um, people watching. Um, the NHS was um, recently awarded the George Cross for its efforts in handling the coronavirus pandemic. And I was just interested to get your view on, um, do, you, do you feel that the care sector was also worthy of recognition? Um, I, I think the care sector would rather see the government and those providing us with better funding um, and uh, suggestions and ideas to help us continue to deliver the service. I think everybody that's worked during this pandemic uh, in our sector, whether it's the NHS, whether it's care homes, food delivery is a hero, um, which is why we're doing our Meals on Wheels hero. We're, we're all heroes, I think, um, during these, these, these last 15 months. Um, whether you're a lorry driver making sure the food gets to, to, to care homes or whether you're on the front line, you know, keeping people safe and well or keeping people safe and well in hospital. So we're all heroes, but I would like to see the government really supporting our sector now and getting us um, our funding and, and the opportunities to make sure we're a sustainable uh, part of a very, very important service within this country. Okay, good answer. <laughs> um, we've got some... Um questions now so that have started coming from people watching um one here from chris o'neill who says um in care catering do we know what percentage of plant-based products are being used or, or is there more of a need for this type of product and um he says he asks because he sees that there's a 30 percent rise in um usage according to reports on the bbc um what what's the situation within the the, the care sector do you do you have any information? So I don't have any. I don't have any figures. Um, so, but I do know there is an increase in plant and plant-based products, um, and I do believe that um, people are starting to um, include that in part of their their menu planning because obviously we've got more and more people now who um, have lived a life where they've they've been um, you know used to a plant-based. Uh, diet so I do know that it's on the, on the increase um, but I'm very happy to to take that back to um, some of my colleagues and find out and um, what the what the what the increase is if we've got the figures then happy to yeah. of course to share that but I do know that it is, it is on the increase because of the demand of, of people yeah. coming into and we, we need to you know in, in care organizations now we need to provide that 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 choice yeah I I, I suppose that the, the one of the things to sort of Put, it, put this into context is that um, I suspect a lot of the interest in, in plant-based foods is predominantly among younger people, uh, less likely to be um, sort of clients of yours in care homes, but um, it, is a, it is a trend, isn't it? It is a trend, and 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 again, you know, from my own experience, so we we've had a couple of people recently that we that come to live in my care site who are both vegetarian. So, you know, we need to provide that. So we need to now. So what we decided as an organisation that we would have in you know, meals on the on the on the menu that are plant based um and again just because you're vegetarian doesn't mean to say that you 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 can have be have a you could be a, a meat eater and still want vegetarian food so we just decided that we would have the opportunity to to provide that yeah sure okay um another question now um has the general occupancy levels reduced through the pandemic and if they have, when do you foresee them returning to pre-pandemic levels? Oh, I wish I had a crystal ball. That'd be <laughs> good, wouldn't it? Um, th I think people have been hesitant to place their loved ones in care homes during the pandemic for the various obvious reasons. Um, it's a difficult one. I think now that everybody is double vaccinated um, within care settings, that, that's a bonus. Um, I think people will feel a little bit happier once they know that staff have been vaccinated as well. But I think one of the challenges that we've got is the fact that we now know that even though you've been double vaccinated, you can still get the virus. And we don't know yet um, if older people are going to be affected more than younger people. Um, it's, it's a really difficult one and, and I wish I had the answer. Um, I think it depends on now where you live, um, what part of the country, what the demand is. 
Um, there are more people staying at home, and that's really where the Meals on Wheels service has been has been critical and care at home. Um, we are just going to have to wait and see. Um, I think this winter is going to be critical. Okay. Um, another question now. Um, do you foresee sector growth in terms of number of care home beds over the next uh, three years? Um, and as part of that, are retirement homes also becoming more popular? So I'm not sure about sector growth. Um, again, you know, from a from a from a care catering perspective, I, I, you know, I, I wouldn't like to to comment on that. Um, there are care homes being built. Um, which is interesting because um, I think one of our biggest challenges is how they're going to stuff them because we're, we're really struggling to, to recruit care staff. Um, I do know there's an increase in um, retirement living or extra care or whatever the, you know, the, the in words are. Um, and I think that's an interesting thing because people then are encouraged to live independently. But if they've got communal areas where there's a restaurant and a cafe, then that's opportunities for, for the sector to, to really champion the importance of still being able to provide you know, really good service in, in, in those types of settings. So I think the, the next 12 months are, is, is going to be interesting as we see those, those um, opportunities unfold within new premises. I think one of the challenges that we've got, we've seen care homes close because they've not been sustainable. And then you wonder where those people are going to go if there's a, if there's a, a reduction in care homes. Um, so I think it will just be interesting. Again, you know, it's, it's so difficult, isn't it? Because you just don't know, um, you know, is the pandemic going to end on a certain day? Um, are we suddenly going to get an influx of stuff coming in? There are all so many ifs, maybes and... Mm. and so it's 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 a really difficult one, and as I say, I, I wish I I wish I knew. Okay, and um, next question then: um, What has changed in terms of the types of dishes that are being served, um, and how will these evolve further over the next few years? So I, I guess it's a question is looking to sort of find out about um, trends, how they have changed in in sort of recent years, and and what possible further trend changes there might be? I think we've become, um, as, as providers, much more aware of the fact that just because you're older doesn't mean to say you don't want to have restaurant type food. Um, and that when people come into care homes, now, as I said to you a little bit earlier, it isn't just about you know the 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 old style of of, of you know, meat pie and a couple of veg on the on your plate. You know, people want more now. Um, they they um, and again, it was really interesting. A couple of nights ago, I was in our restaurant here, and and they'd got bruschetta for tea, and and I think yeah, wow, and it looked fabulous with the drizzle on it, and the and and they were absolutely loving it. And and I think we we just need to know that. The trends are changing. People are used to different kinds of food from being in restaurants now. And just because you come into a care home doesn't mean to say you you still don't want to have that served. And again, that's where our care chef is really important. We have some fabulous meals produced and the standard and, and the way it's presented is, is, is incredible. And people working um, in care homes want to provide that. And people living here want to have that restaurant style food. So the trends are the trends are changing, which is, I think, really, really good. OK, I wanted to uh, go back now to um, one of the, the issues that you've um, made a point of, of highlighting, um, the recruitment. But you say that um, actually the, the, there's a lot of sort of ignorance of uh, uh, among people generally about what it might be to to work as a, a chef in the in the care sector, um, for, for, from from your experience, I mean, what what do you the, are the benefits that um, uh, someone who's a, a chef or thinking about becoming a chef that what would they get benefits they would get from working in your sector as opposed to um, hotels or restaurants, for instance? More sociable hours, so you know, yeah. not having to work till 11, 12 o'clock at night. Um, we've got, you know, our customers um, are very appreciative. Um, you're making a difference to people's lives every single day. You know, it could just be one small thing that makes that difference. So there's there's a really good um, good feel factor 
providing meals to older uh, older people um opportunities to to train and develop um we know in our sector that, that there are lots of opportunities to, to support people to train and develop within in the sector um and learn new skills and 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 work with other organizations to to learn new things you know it it isn't it isn't a boring industry far from it it's an industry that's really on, on the up we we are there's a lot of elderly people living within our society so you know again it isn't just about you know delivering meals to people in 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 the restaurants in in care establishments if people are having meals at, in their own homes we want to make sure they get lovely meals presented to them so i think it's um a sector that if you're going to you want a slight change or you want to do something a little bit different it's a it's a fabulous i mean obviously you know you're speaking to me i'm the converted and i i eat sleep breathe care and catering catering's a passion of mine um and to me if we make the difference for one person on a daily basis then we're doing a fabulous job and i think people need to know that they will make a difference one of the words you used a bit earlier was fun which i don't think people would necessarily associate with um you know working in a kitchen but you, you believe that do you oh we have a lot of fun we have a lot of fun here and you know when you have your themed days and and you you do things around the theme days and you get everybody involved you know that the, the, the chefs are brilliant at getting involved in things like that um so you know we, we've got something coming up next week where we're wearing a um we're, we're doing an around the world trip it's a it's you know it's a, a bit of an event we're doing and we're, we're having a theme day around um spices and one of our chefs has got so excited about how he's going to do lots of things about spices and 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 have a bit of fun and a quiz and and he wants to do it. So it, you know, it isn't just about coming to work and cooking the meal. It's getting involved in the delivery of the care and the support, working with the care teams, um, and and making it fun and interesting for for those people that you know we look after. Okay, um, another question. Um, talking about ingredients, seasoning, quantity of salt, sugar levels, etc. Et um, what sort of um, guidance do you uh, or your members have to operate to in regarding, you know, sort of providing healthy eating in care homes? Or is so, there none? Yeah, obviously there's a lot of guidance um, for us as, uh, you know, providing um, uh, the, the, the right levels for the people with their different diets. Um, and you work very much in in, in combination with it with the care staff and, and the dietitians um, and obviously from the NAC's perspective we've got some fabulous guidance we've got our meal planning document that really helps chefs to understand the importance of, of, of what ingredients um, whether it's a, a low salt, salt diet or a low sugar diet so so those um, publications that we provide members and non-members are, are really key in ensuring that people get it right in in relation to those diets special diets are, are much more common now than they've ever been um because of the, the, the different things that people are living with so um as again as an organization we're able to support people within the sector uh whether it's through our webinars or or through our website okay um now so something else i i, I picked up on was that um you mentioned um the the, the pandemic because of the restrictions that it imposed, um, uh, actually uh, forced um, caterers to become a little bit more innovative in, in the way that they sort of um, prepared and, and delivered food. And I just wondered if you had you know, a, an example uh, of, of, of that innovation. I can only use it from my perspective, because um, you, you um, obviously you've got me thinking on the hoof, as they say. Um, so what we what we did within my organization is is think about how we could make um birthdays a bit more fun because they weren't able to come down for birthday teas so um we took we took the birthday tea to them um and and sang on the corridors and then what happened from that was a, a family saw the um saw the video um and said is there any possibility that you could do an afternoon tea in a box so we've now started doing afternoon tea in boxes for for the residents, um, and and that's been really lovely, especially if um, you know where families have not been able to see uh, and be here. So um, we've been the chefs have done it all. They've been really creative about putting the boxes together and what they put in it, um, and and the delight when the families see the box being delivered, and and then you know so so it's it's just 
just using ideas and 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 just you know being a little bit creative about what we can do to support people um when life has just not been normal okay and um uh, the feeding into the sort of the whole recruitment issue is um not 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 just bringing in people who are already chefs but enthusing um catering college students with the idea that there there is a possibility of a, a career within um the care catering sector too it, it, that, that's important isn't it it's very important and that's where you know my colleagues are on the other national organizations it's really important that we work together and we support each other um so that we can encourage people uh, into the sector and you know I, I would actively encourage you know people to to work with their local college and to say you know if you want to offer people an apprenticeship or come and spend a day i mean obviously it's been difficult during the pandemic we've not been able to do those sorts of things um but to try and encourage people to to come and and, and spend a day in and life of a chef in a care home and just work with them um it's it's really really important and the other thing that you know people can look at is you know spend a bit of time working with chefs in in hotels and 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 you know become you know how you 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 twin with uh, with towns why not twin with a local hotel and get the chef to come and work in in the care home and send your chef to go and work in in in, in the hotel and just share ideas and and thoughts and 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 just give that support uh, I, I know from my, my own experience that, that that's something that the um that the schools um sector does they they do a sort of a, a swapping uh, roles if you like where a, a school chef will go and work in a in a restaurant and then there will be a return visit and it it, it always seems from the, the the feedback that you get that both parties feel they've gained something from it yes most definitely most definitely and and it's about isn't it it's about because i I'm, I'm really keen on community engagement so it's it's, a, it's about engaging with your local community as well okay right um i've got another question now which is about gluten-free meals um the the question is asking uh, whether there's an increase in demand for them and has providing meals with allergen requirements proven increasingly difficult in the care sector due to the lack of training available for new staff? Gluten-free meals, we've got more people living within my care organisation with gluten-free meals than we've, than we've ever had. Um, uh, and again, we've had to make sure the staff are trained to, to understand the importance of it and what happens if that person has the gluten. Um, again, this is something the NACC can help and support with. We've got some real experts um, uh, on our team that can support um, people who don't necessarily have an understanding or need some help with it. And again, our special uh, our meal planning document and our, the section on special diets uh, that again you know, we're able to support. And, and that's what the NACC is all about: how we can support people to 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 learn about the importance of it and and how to plan their meals and, and cook and again just because somebody's gluten free doesn't mean to say that they have to have completely different foods um, they can still have the same thing you just need to make it differently. Okay, um, I mean, inevitably someone's um, come along now with a, a question about the uh, the supply chain, which I guess is linked to the sort of uh, the, the the distribution issues that um, you know not not just you but but many others are, are facing. Um, What's been your, your experience so far and um, what, what have you heard from your members about this? So from, from my perspective, uh, we, thankfully we, we buy local, so, so we, we have not been affected yet. Um, I think that we are, we are concerned um, because I don't think it's going to get any, any better and I think the next few months are going to be interesting. Um, why I haven't heard anything yet from, from members um, and, you know, uh, we're just going to have to work together and support each other and, and try and, you know, if, if a care home is, is struggling, uh, when we did have somebody actually in the pandemic who was struggling to get some supplies. And again, through our network, we were very quickly able to put them in touch with somebody that um, was a member and they helped them out. So again, I think through the NACC, through the, through the main uh, website, through the office, you know, if people are having problems with supply, we can work together to try and, and help those care homes. I, I suppose one of the, uh, the sort of the issues that follows on from that is um, if you're having problems with, with getting regular deliveries, then perhaps fewer but bigger ones. But then that immediately creates the sort of a, an issue over storage, doesn't it? Which I, I imagine that uh, pe people will struggle with too. 
Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure. But as I say, again, I think if we if, if somebody's got an issue, if they if they want to, to 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 contact us, then through our through our you know wealth of suppliers and support we've got, um, you know, we, we will do our best to help people. OK, so that is great. That, um, thank you very much for the, the, the time you've given us there. I think it's time we uh, uh, gave, gave you a short break and uh, moved on to find out what's going to be happening at the NACC Training and Development Forum this year. Um, and Mary Wedge is here to tell us about it. Mary, are you, are you there? I am. OK, uh, well, I'll leave it up to you then. OK. OK, so this year's Training Development Forum um, is at the Nottingham Conference Centre, where it's been for the last 10 years. Uh, 6 to the 8th of October, um, East Midlands Conference Centre, Nottingham. I think one of the biggest things, listening to what Sue's been saying, I think there will be concerns about people coming out from the homes, being allowed to come out and actually join us. We as an organisation have taken on a health and safety expert, um, which made this event, this live event, is going to be completely COVID safe. So although restrictions may be lifted, we will still be ensuring that we have our health and safety expert on site who will be able to advise us on a day-to-day -day basis um, what we do, how we do it. We'll have one-way systems. We will make sure that you are safe to come to our event. We're going to have an app which is going to be, which you can download on the day of when you actually join us. Um, and that will be just for the event. So all of the programmes, all of the leaflets, all of the newsletters, um, will actually be on this app so you can download everything on your phones. So NACC um, TDF is a packed two day schedule of um, lots of events. Um, this year we've changed the way that we're doing the Care Chef final. We're actually going to run the Care Chef final on the Wednesday morning on the 6th of um, October um, in a local cookery school in Grantham. We will actually announce the Care Chef finalists on the Thursday morning, which is a really exciting event for us because not only does it bring all of our Care Chef finalists together with all of the um, delegates and exhibitors, but it also gives the Care Chefs an actual opportunity to meet and um, network with other people of like-minded views. We've got lots of keynote speakers, training workshops, um, live cookery demonstrations, some of which will actually cover some of the points that Sue actually discussed. So we will have a motivational speaker that will motivate us with regards to our staffing issues, how we can look at recruitment, how we can manage to look at innovative ways to recruit people. We will have um, the workshops and the um, demonstrations will cover special diets. They will cover the plant-based issues. They will cover ITSI. They will cover lots of different things that we're all currently struggling with and looking at. We will have meet the buyer meetings on Wednesday. Um, we will actually have the meet the buyer meetings on, on the ex exhibitor stands. And that will work really well because it will give the exhibitors a chance to have a one-to-one -one with their, um, their delegates and also actually be on the stand so you can actually see what we're going to demonstrate over the next few days. Um, Sue and David have both talked about our awards. They're very important. Um, there's lots of awards. There's a Care Home Award, there's a Team Award, there's a Catering Manager Award, there's a um, Hero Award, there's a Meals on Wheels Award. There are awards that fit everybody that's in within this care catering sector. And please, 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 if you want information on it, please go to the nacc.co.uk um, and the website, you can download an entry form. Please start filling them in. The awards deadline is coming up soon. Networking is the biggest thing. I think we all were known as the friendly fun um, association. Uh, we have a reputation for being that. But I think the biggest thing is about sharing experiences, whether they're good, whether they're bad, whether they're sad, um, and hopefully sharing those like-minded experiences with everybody that can actually tell you how things have been, but how they've managed to do new things um, for, the, um, for the future within your care homes. So as I said, the Care Chef final of the year uh, finalists will be on Wednesday morning. 
Um, again, that is COVID safe. We've had our health and safety uh, expert there, ensuring that everybody meets with the restrictions. We will then move over to Wednesday afternoon with a networking lunch, where um, we then move on to our Meet the Buyer, uh, which is eight appointments for all exhibitors. Um, we will also have the AGM for members um, and presentations to Premier Partners to thank the partners for all their support through this very, very difficult time and their continuing support as well. We always have a pre-conference networking party, event, whatever you would like to call it on the Wednesday. This is about where we are friendly, we are fun. This is about meeting people that you haven't met before. And hopefully we'll have new members that have joined us as well. So we go out of our way to engage with everybody and make sure that everybody knows everyone. The um, exhibition viewing, um, as I said, we will start off with um, the finalist presentation on the Thursday morning, um, which is a prize giving of the NACC Care Chef of the Year. It's about inspirational care leadership, food, glorious food. That's what we need to do. The workshops will cover great food, good health, catering in the healthcare and social care sector, the new norm, What's all the fuss about oral health? I think we've all had issues with our teeth and the way that our mouth works. It's difficult when people have dementia or difficult when people are struggling with actually eating. Malnutrition and older people in the UK. We have people like Phil Shelley, um, the NHS Review attending. We have um, Debbie uh, Aluma, who's going to talk about, he's a much, uh, sorry, Debbie Harris, who's the Managing Director of Atoma. It's a very interesting question we asked about um, the quality of food being served to residents and care homes. It needs to change, it is changing, it has changed. It's so much better than where it was. It is absolutely, as Sue said, it is hospitality food, it's hotel food that we serve. Um, and the generations are changing, people's requirements are changing. So Debbie wants to talk to us about providers wanting to attract self-funding clients, but also, with the increasing investment into the care home sector and an aging population, the time has come for the equivalent of a good food guide for care homes. We can do that. We're doing it already. We just need to be able to put it together and bring it to the forefront of all of the care homes and the care sector within the UK. Um, so Thursday on the 7th of October, we've also got cookery demonstrations, which include making mealtimes memorable. Um, by Central Cuisine, Hydration and Care by Robocoop, um, Adding Nutrition and Flavour Through Innovation, Major International, Mona's cookery, Curry Cookering Class, which will be really interesting, eFoods, Making Your Desserts Work Hard For You, Unilever Food Solutions, all of which are applicable within our sector at the moment. We all need new ideas. We all need to motivate the chefs that we've got. Um, and this can be part of their training as well. So there's a lot of opportunity here for people to learn how we can set up more training within the industry. Um, we then have um, on, on Thursday night, we have our awards dinner uh, where we present the awards to the um, shortlisted and the winners of all the awards that we run. Um, it's a prestigious night, we really enjoy it. We're hoping that we'll be able to enjoy it in the way that we would like to, but we will still make sure that people are, I'm going to call it COVID safe, but people are safe and feel safe within the environment that we've set up for the awards dinner. Friday, um, we have a networking brunch and we have a motivational speaker, Jonathan Cunningham. I think some of you may know him. He actually owns and runs his own care home group. So as well as being a motivational speaker, he will talk to us about what he's done, how he's managed through uh, the pandemic, what he's done and innovative ideas that he's done within his care group. And he'll share those with us, but he's also going to be more looking at how we have coped, how we're coming, hopefully coming out of it, but also about how we can manage ourselves and look after ourselves moving forward as well. Um, so looking at the importance of leadership within your care se sector, but it's not just about the leadership, it's about you as a person and how you motivate your staff and how you can carry that forward. So if anybody would like any more details, um, you certainly you can go onto the website, the www.thenacc.co.uk 
or you can call this number, which I'm sure will be in the recording anyway. But if you want to call that number, they will send you information on um, exhibition stands, delegates or attending. Um, we have different uh, levels of um, joining. So we have levels for delegate, 24 hour package. You can just come on the Wednesday night if that's what you want to do. You can just come for the awards dinner or you can come as a day visitor. Um, lots of different options and lots of different prices. So should be within everybody's budget. I hope um, that that's given you an idea of where we're going and why we're doing it. We really would love to have everybody join. We are, we've, we're very, we, we are up on our delegate places this year. We're certainly up on exhibition stands uh, and we've got more partners than we've ever had supporting the NACC. So please take a look. If you need any um, answers or any information, please contact the NACC. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for that. It sounds like if you've got any interest uh, or involvement at all in the uh, care catering sector, then uh, you need to be putting uh, the, the dates October 6th to the 8th in your diary. Um, that, I'm afraid, has to be it for, for today. My thanks to um, Sue, Mary, and to you too for joining us. Um, on the final slides coming up now, you'll see a list of um, our webinars coming up after the summer. Um, there will also be details of the Public Sector Catering Awards um, 2021, which is a live event taking place on um, September the 9th that allows us to celebrate the work of caterers um, working in the care sector and in many others too. Um, and finally, after that, you'll see the logos of the Public Sector Catering 100 Group sponsors, whose generous support allows us to make events like this uh, possible. So uh, with that, I'll say see you after the summer and goodbye.